So in this video we're going to talk about how carbon cycles around the biosphere. We're really interested in these, studying these cycles because organisms need access to certain atoms in order to build the molecules that make up their cells. Um, we're going to cover kind of more of the atoms that you need and the atoms that are in each molecule, but just as an introduction, we broadly need access to carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. Um, and a lot of textbooks will talk about cycles and ecology for each of, of these atoms kind of broadly. They'll talk about carbon, water, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycles and sulfur cycles in some cases too. Um, we're just going to focus on the carbon cycle for the most part in this course um, because carbon really is at the backbone of all of the molecules that we're going to talk about later in the cells unit. And so we just kind of want to focus our attention appreciating that we also have access to these other atoms. But how do we get access to the carbon that we need to build up our bodies is what we want to focus on here. And so here is kind of a, a way to sketch out the carbon cycle broadly. Um, it looks rather complicated, but we're going to walk kind of through step by step here as we go through this video. Um, the first thing I just want to point out is that matter does cycle. Um, all of the carbon that has been here on this planet has always been here in some form or another. Um, the carbon that currently makes me up is currently inside me, but it, um, there are ways that it will eventually be released. Um, back into the atmosphere and, and give an opportunity for some other organism to take in that carbon. Um, so we can see that with the arrows here, um, that the carbon dioxide can be taken up by autotrophs like plants. Maybe those plants can be eaten by herbivores. Maybe those herbivores get eaten by carnivores. Um, but then those carnivores breathe, take some of their own carbon and breathe, burn it, and breathe it out through respiration to return it to the air. And so that, that would just be one way that the, the carbon got back to where it started. And we'll go through all of these processes turn by turn. So what I really want you to take from this video is I really want you to be able to talk me through this carbon cycle. We're going to have other activities that try to reinforce these concepts. But what I really want you to take some time to do is to be able to think about where might carbon go if it's in one source, how might it move to another source? We're going to see that not always will these arrows go to any of the other sources that I've kind of uh, depicted. For example, I as a human cannot pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere myself. Um, only autotrophs can do that. And so you'd want to draw your arrows carefully. Also, I want you to name each transformation as you draw it. So if you draw an arrow from one source to another, what's the name of that process of converting carbon from one form to another? So let's start and do some examples. Uh, the first thing is we could talk about how carbon dioxide in the air is able to um, uh, enter into living organisms. We can see that only autotrophs can do this. This process, conversion process is called photosynthesis. And very broadly what this process does is it takes carbon dioxide out of the air and it converts it into a solid um, becoming biomass. Um, technically it becomes sugar or a glucose, um, but in this little um, discussion I just want to think about is, is carbon inside of the body of a living plant. Um, plants are certainly autotrophs who can do photosynthesis, but there are more organisms than just plants who are autotrophs. I just want to make sure I highlight that. So I tried to show some uh, uh, a microscopic picture of algae that you might find in a pond or in the ocean, let's say. Lots of photosynthetic autotrophic organisms. Um, they need light to do this as well, and what they're really doing is they're taking that gaseous carbon dioxide and they're kind of creating an energy-rich carbon molecule stored in their bodies. Um, just to really get across how amazing this process is, um, what plants are doing when they're building them themselves, um, if you think of like a seedling that's growing and eventually becoming a mature adult plant, is they're really taking air around them and they're converting it into solids. They're building themselves very gradually out of air um, through this process of photosynthesis. Okay, so what can happen to some of the biomass that exists in those plants? Well, maybe um, heterotrophs can eat some of that. How do we get access to our carbon? We, we don't make it ourselves through photosynthesis. We just eat it. So maybe there are herbivores that um, just eat the plants directly, or maybe there are carnivores that eat the herbivores, or maybe there are omnivores who do a little bit of both. And then um, heterotrophs also include decomposers. So maybe when organisms die, like plants or squirrels or lions, their biomass can be um, digested and absorbed by decomposers like fungi to build up their bodies. 
And so whether you're a consumer or whether you're a decomposer, you're largely just taking other organisms' biomass carbon and sort of digesting it and then eventually making it your own. You're building up your bodies based on what you eat. Okay, some of that biomass that any organism possesses, you'll want to take out of storage by burning it to release the energy that you need to stay alive. Um, that's the energy aspect of it. And I, just to focus on the matter aspect of it, whenever you take biomass carbon out of storage and um, burn it, you release it as carbon dioxide. And so we could call that cellular respiration. We're gonna have a lot more to say about that process in the future as well. But broadly, we're just saying right now that that's taking some of the, the matter in your body and burning it to um, release as carbon dioxide. That's what happens to the matter. And the reason why you do it is because you need to release that stored energy to do something in your body um, that requires energy. And so all organisms do this. Sometimes students just think that animals do this and then plants do photosynthesis. Um, notice that I put the tree and the algae in this picture too. Everybody does respiration. Um, the only difference between autotrophs and heterotrophs is where they obtain their carbon. Um, but they both can burn it through the same process to stay alive. Okay, what can also happen to some of our biomass carbon? Maybe in special cases um, when organisms die before they get decomposed by decomposers, maybe their biomass, maybe their bodies get buried um, through some kind of natural process. And so they get buried deep under the earth where decomposers really don't have access to them um, through a very long millions of years process that requires a lot of heat and pressure their biomass carbon can become fossil fuel carbon um, if you've heard of uh, fossil fuels like oil coal natural gas sometimes we call these hydrocarbons as well um, we're basically just taking the carbon that's in our body and um, uh, converting it to this ultra energy rich uh, fossil fuel carbon um, lots of stored chemical energy in those fossil fuels because one thing we might do as modern society is take those fossil fuels and burn them kind of like respiration was for for living organisms releasing energy um, by doing this process of combustion we're taking the stored chemical energy in these fossil fuels and by burning them we're releasing it as carbon dioxide just like cellular respiration um, but that also releases a tremendous amount of energy that we can use to do lots of useful things like um, uh, generate electricity um, in our power grid to power the lights and power this computer we can also uh, burn fossil fuels to say move our cars um, so lots of things that modern society uses, but it also releases the carbon dioxide matter back into the air. All right, so I think we've kind of broadly been through each station. I, I again want you to see in this summary slide that these arrows only point in certain directions. Again, you can't just take carbon dioxide from the air and create fossil fuels. Um, you can't just take um, carbon dioxide in the air and kind of um, swallow it as a carnivore and, and build you up your bodies. Um, so there's only, place, only certain places these arrows point. I want you to take notice of that. And I also want you to be able to name the, the transformation process. And again, matter cycles. It is uh, the carbon that has been on this planet has always been here.